Niagara Falls is a popular tourist destination with plenty of activities and attractions. In this video, I'll be sharing 17 things to do in Niagara Falls, Ontario. But before I get started, don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell to be notified of future travel videos. Niagara Falls is located just over an hour from Toronto, Ontario and borders Niagara Falls, New York, connected by the Rainbow Bridge. When borders are open, you can actually walk, bike, or drive across the bridge and have great views of the falls. There are so many things to do in Niagara, it's hard to capture them all, so here are 17 activities to help you plan your own trip to Niagara Falls, Ontario. The first activity is wine tasting. The Niagara region is famous for their wineries, and there are over 50 wineries in the area. About half of these are just a 15 to 20 minute drive outside of the main Niagara Falls area. You can drive yourself and follow the wine route, you can bike, or you can take a guided wine tour. Niagara normally has a wine festival in the fall and a nice wine festival in January. Definitely stop by a winery if you're in the Niagara region. Attraction two is the Falls Incline Railway. This railway connects the Falls View tourist area with the Table Rock Center where you can get great views of the falls. It's a convenient and quick way to get down to the falls or back up to the main tourist area without having to walk up the steep and busy Clifton Hill. These are fully accessible, open year round and climate controlled too. Plus, it's a fun activity for both adults and children. The third activity is to check out the falls. From the Canadian side, you have great views of the American and Bridal Veil Falls and the Canadian Horseshoe Falls. I highly recommend visiting both sides so you can get up close on the American side and have great panoramic views on the Canadian side. And be sure to visit during the day and evening because at night you can see the falls lit up with colors every night throughout the year. The next activity is to zip line at the falls. If you're the adventurous type, you can go on the zip line to the falls. Prices start at about $70 per person, but it's definitely a bucket list item for the thrill seekers out there. The fifth thing to do at Niagara Falls is to take a river cruise. If you're on the Canadian side, you can go on the Hornblower and the American side is famous for Made of the Mist. Regardless of which boat ride you take, you can get up close and personal with the falls. In other words, you get pretty much soaked, but it is definitely a popular attraction in Niagara Falls. The sixth attraction in Niagara Falls is Clifton Hill. This area of the city is completely catered to tourists with restaurants, entertainment, attractions, bars, rides, and more. Whether you're visiting as a family with kids or you're there on a couple's or adult getaway, there is plenty to see and do in this area. Like the famous Skywheel, the Niagara Speedway, the Wax Museums, Guinness World Records, Ripley's Believe It or Not, the Great Canadian Midway, and so much more. We have had many fun evenings on Clifton Hill doing karaoke, visiting the brewery, and other bars and restaurants too. But be warned, prices are what you'd expect for a tourist trap. I mean, attraction, like this. Still, it's definitely something to check out. Number seven on my list is to dine out. Niagara Falls has plenty of great restaurants in the hotel area by the falls, but there are also nice restaurants outside of the tourist area. So 
So if you find the Clifton Hill area a little bit too busy, definitely head outside of the main area and try some of the restaurants on the outskirts of town. The eighth attraction is the Niagara Glen Nature Center. The Niagara Glen overlooks the rushing waters of the Niagara River and the natural Niagara River Whirlpool. It's a popular hiking destination for visitors and locals alike with guided tours available. There are a number of trails to hike and they also have bouldering here at the Glen. We enjoyed the views from above and noticed that it was a very popular picnicking spot. The ninth activity is taking a Whirlpool jet boat tour. If you're feeling extra adventurous and want to ride the rapids, you can take a boat tour that either gets you completely soaked or one that keeps you dry. Personally, I'm not sure I'd want to do either of these, but it's great to know that both options exist if you want to give this a try. Attraction number 10 is the Living Water Wayside Chapel, aka the Tiny Chapel. This 72 square foot chapel is a very charming chapel with four pews that can hold about six people. It's a cute stop if you're in the area. Fort George National Historic Site is the 11th attraction on the list. Fort George was a military post that defended Upper Canada against American attacks. You can step back in time on your visit to Fort George and see soldiers in red coats that fire muskets, hear historical music, and learn more about Canadian history. Number 12 is the Floral Clock. This famous clock is made out of up to 16,000 bedding plants that are changed twice a year. It's a popular tourist attraction and can get really busy. We decided to do a drive-by on our latest visit, but if you have the time, you should definitely stop here. Number 13 is the Butterfly Conservatory. We didn't go inside on our latest trip, but it's a great activity if you have about an hour to spare. This is one of the largest glass enclosed butterfly conservatories in North America and has over 2,000 butterflies. There are beautiful winding pathways, plants and flowers to admire as well on your self-guided tour. Number 14 is to visit a brewery. Niagara has different breweries to choose from and we've been to a few of them. Niagara Brewing Company is conveniently located on Clifton Hill, but outside the tourist area you can also find other breweries to choose from, like Osthaus and Bench to name a few. The Skyline Tower is the 15th attraction to see. You can admire it from the ground or go up to the observation deck or restaurant for 360 degree views of the city, including the falls. Number 16 is the Laura Secord Homestead. Laura Secord is a historic Canadian figure who set out on a brave journey during the War of 1812 to protect her country. You can go on a guided tour of her homestead by guides in historic costume and learn more about Laura and Canadian history. And the final attraction on my list is Niagara on the Lake. Located a short drive away from Niagara Falls, Niagara on the Lake is a charming town that has a beautiful heritage district with small boutiques, 
shops, restaurants, and even horse-drawn carriages. It's a popular tourist destination for wine tours, shopping, and just enjoying the charming waterfront village. It does get very busy on weekends, especially in the nicer weather, but it's still worth a visit in my opinion. And there you have it, just 17 of the many attractions and activities that you can do if you're planning a visit to Niagara Falls, Ontario. I hope this video can be helpful to you and feel free to share it with anyone else looking to visit the Niagara region. As always, don't forget to give it a like and subscribe to my channel for more travel videos coming soon.